So there's this term called uh, backdoor revival, and if you've never heard that term before, um, basically what that's about is, um, let's say, you know, you're at a physical church setting, you know, where, you, where you're physically congregating with with people, and um, these other people show up, or, or they've been coming for a while. And they slowly been trying to put leaven into the minds of the people, okay? And then the preacher finds out, and he basically preaches them out the door, okay? You know, sometimes he calls them out by name. Other times he just rebukes the doctrine really, really hard, um, to the point where the people that were espousing such heresies, um, they end up leaving, okay? And the group that stays uh, forms a tighter bond, and, uh, you know, they, they get more grounded in the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? And um, a lot of times backdoor revivals are necessary to clean out the leaven, Um and, you know, even on the internet, you know, virtual backdoor revivals are necessary. When people come on your channel um, and, you know, they want to spy out your liberty in Christ and try to bring, you know, some of the, the younger believers back under, under, you know, the law or try to act like, you know... You better be looking at your works to prove that you're really saved and preaching all this Calvinistic garbage. Um, yeah, it needs to be called out and that the people that fell for that Calvinistic garbage, if they refuse to, uh, you know, see, see the truth, uh, then yeah, they need to leave. They need to leave my channel. They need to leave your channel. They need to leave, um, you know, the, the, the physical church that's, you know, preaching the right gospel, and these heretics need to leave, okay? So that the people that remain, um, you know, form a tighter bond and, and get more grounded in the truth and get more versed in the gospel, okay? So that there's not these weird distractions. And you know what? Sometimes in a physical church setting... If some guy calls out, you know, um, for example, I knew this pastor that he found out that his deacon was secretly going around um, spouting Seventh-day Adventist garbage and denying eternal security, okay? So the pastor preached a few sermons calling out certain doctrines and the Seventh-day Adventist movement. Look, and this was in a Baptist church, okay? So... <laughs> You know, what are you doing being a deacon at a Baptist church if you believe in Seventh-day Adventism garbage? Now, um, anyways, there was a church split over that, and people try to, like, vote out the pastor, and um, I think it was like a third of the church left, or, or like a 40% or something like that left. And look, good riddance, okay? Because um, why would you want to hang out with people who, you know, <clears throat> believe in another Jesus and, and you know, teach works and, and, you know, deny eternal security, things like that. And, uh, but you know what? Those 30, 40% of people that left, I'm sure not all of them believed the Seventh Avenue garbage they just fawned over the heretic that was preaching it. And so when the pastor stood up um, for the truth, those people love the heretic more than the truth. Okay? So they left because the pastor offended the heretic or something. And, you know, even on the internet, 
there's some people I believe that are saved, but they just fawn over heretics. It's weird, okay? And some of them are gonna leave my channel, and you know, you need to be gone, okay? Because if you're going to defend people who preach damnable heresies, just because you're offended at what I said, then you have no business being here either um, until you change your mind about defending heretics and getting offended for the sake of heretics and uh, get offended over the sake of the gospel instead. Um, you know, be a defender of the gospel. Um, anyways, good day.